Hello class, uh, in this video presentation, I will show you how to install SQL Server 2012. In our, my last video, I already showed you how to install Windows 2012 Server. So this presentation is to install SQL Server. So let's go to Microsoft site to download the software. And already I showed you the link how, how to go come to this site. And there we will be downloading 2012 evaluation version. And nowadays most of the PCs are 64-bit. So we will be downloading the 64-bit version. There are total three files. One is core install and the LANG, which is a language. So in order to download, uh, just go ahead and click. But before downloading, make sure that your operating system is 64-bit, you can do so by going to Windows Explorer and then go to PC and right mouse click to properties as I'm showing you here and then you would be able to see your system type is 64-bit and in my case my RAM is also 64-bit. So depending on your operating system, so make sure you have a 64-bit machine running. So once it's there, you download them I, in order to expedite this uh, installation process, I already downloaded to one of my SQL folder that I have created in my machine, in my host machine. So to do so, go ahead and download these three files. So as you can see, I have downloaded to my personal folder. And in my case, this is the folder that I'm using. And now here, one thing to note, and they pay very attention over here, that this folder exists in my host laptop. And if you remember in my previous video when I showed you how to install Windows 2012 server on a VMware, we did at the end, we did uh, do a networking between my host PC to VMware. And one of the reason was most of the time when you will be downloading things from over the net, it's easier to download them in your host machine. And another, the other reason is because your Windows 2012 is a server, so it won't really by default allow you to go to different website and then download software straight to the server. It's kind of like a security policy. And of course, if you need to change it, you can go ahead and change it, but that will be a different uh, topic. So the summary is you download your stuff into your client machine, and from there, you can either FTP it to your server, or you can, if it is residing in the same network, you can just like that you can share a folder which which can be accessible through the server and in our case that's what we did so basically we created this folder and then we make this folder available via vmware and that's how we'll be accessing this all these files okay so now let's start up our vmware workstation and this is the Win Server 2012 that we install. So I will power it up. Okay, it's powering up. So let's start it. Okay, and now. Now that we are in and now it's still the serving the dashboard will show up like as i said last time so you can hide it or you can cross it out and now let's go and find that folder from the host machine where we downloaded those three files so click to your file manager or file explorer and then go to network and you will find that one under network because whenever you click to this PC so this is this all belongs to the VMware machines operating system so in the network VMware host and then shared folder now as you can see I have that three files that I have downloaded from the internet 
And now here, if you click to that install, what it will do, it will create a folder where it will merge all those three, all these three files. And where, if you click it, remember, because this folder reside in host machine, depending on your power of your uh, laptop, say in my case, as I have 64 GB and I have a one terabyte of space, so it will take, it will pretty, it will be pretty fast for my case, but maybe in your case, it might take a longer time. So my recommendation would be, once you see this one, copy these three into your local VMware machine. To do that, what we can do, you will just control, click the control button and then highlight these three. And then you say copy. And now let's go to your PC and see if you have anything there. You can create a new folder. In my case, I have created a folder called, no, I didn't create any folder yet. So let's create a folder and let's name it as same as SQL DBA. You can name any anything you like. So there I will paste all that three files. So now that I copied that these three files, so I will select the middle one which is the install one so then i'll double click when i double click it so it will create a folder right here as you can see it created a folder called sql full underscore x64 underscore e and u and over there basically what it's doing right now is getting the files from core is getting the language file from the other one language.box file and it's merging and creating a new folder called SQL pool 64 ENU. So our extraction been done. So we have a folder created is 64 bit ENU folder. So let's click to that folder. And as you can see, you have a setup and all the necessary files and folders being merged and being moved to here. So now we are ready to install SQL Server 2012 standalone version. And remember this class, this one is the first phase of installation because I want you to start practicing and stuff like that. And in our second version, we will be installing a SQL Server in a production-like environment because that's what you will be dealing when you will be start working as a DBA. So let's start with this version type of soft, uh, installation. So now I will enter to full screen mode and now I'll double click to my setup. It will take a while to come up. So finally it came up. It takes about like uh, probably 10 seconds. So now we'll come here and go to installation, click to installation, and you will install this standalone version. Now this is very important. If you have any failed component then you need to fix it before proceeding further so a lot of times most of the time if you have a very high speed and a powerful machine most of the time it will you will get all pass but in case if you have some sort of failed then you need to do some research on it so let's click to ok Now this is an evaluation version, as I mentioned last time, it's for 180 days, I believe. Uh, so we'll keep it as is, uh, we don't have any product key. And then we'll accept the license term. And here you can do a check this one. So basically what Microsoft is asking in case if the server is doing some sort of going through some sort of abnormal behavior, Microsoft would like to know what it happened so that way they can fix that one or 
if they find out any bug or stuff like that. So for our training purposes, really you don't need it because unnecessarily it will make a trip to Microsoft side and back and forth, stuff like that. So let's go to Now, the, keep the default as is, include SQL Server product update. Mm, I would say because it's a training, let's uncheck it. Okay, so now we came to set up support roles. And one thing to remember, folks, uh, because I've been pausing in between, my uh, conversation and the installation step in order to save the total recording time. So for your case, it might take a little longer, but just be patient and uh, follow through these steps. So here, as you can see, most of them are passed. Only one thing was Windows Firewall warning. As long as it's warning, you are okay. And moreover, also from the name, as you can see, it's a Windows firewall. Because one of the reason is, is we are installing in server. So by default, the firewall is being shut and they have some default rules are there. So that's why the firewall rule is giving you as a warning that something is not correctly done. You need to revisit and Take, uh, take care of those things. And usually like in production environment or in a company environment, these are totally the task for a network team. As a DBA, you really don't need to worry about this too much. But again, having a good knowledge in networking help a DBA a lot because that's way when they are talking or he or she is talking with the network team, they can they know what they are talking about and he can demand what he really needs to install his SQL Server correctly. So now we'll go to next and we will create the SQL Server feature installation. And once we go there, let's first click to everything. So in order to make it larger, so that way easily you can read it. Select everything. And then we will uncheck few things because in our this endeavor, we are really thinking about just uh, installing SQL Server. We are not taking it, working on SharePoint on other stuff. So unnecessary installing all those things in a server, which you can if you want to, but it's, it will take a little longer time. And like whenever you start the server, it will take a little longer time to start up because it's going to start every single engine that you already define in your while you were where you install the SQL server. So let's uncheck reporting service. This one as well. Then master data. Oh, we don't need that. Then distribution to repay. Replay controller. Okay, let's get rid of it. Either integration service. If you are working on SSIS and stuff, you can. So I'll leave it on in case in future if we think about it. So you can play with SSIS and at that time you don't have to reinstall all the power component that you didn't install in your earlier version. So we, I guess we are okay. And now click to next. I will stop right here as we exit 15 minutes for the recording time. So we will pick from here in part two.